I've got the top seven budget audio interfaces here and I've tested them all. While they're all great interfaces, they have some pros and cons that I'm gonna cover today. I've run them through all the tests vocals, guitars, headphone levels, preamps, and even software included. And you really should consider the plugins and software these interfaces come with because that may be the deciding factor for you. You'll find links to get more info and purchase any of these audio interfaces in the video description. If you want to hear how these interfaces sound, I've recorded vocals and guitar samples. You'll find them at the end of this video. If you're new to my channel, consider subscribing for more music production tips, gear reviews, and some inspiration. And if you have a question, leave it in the comments below. Now let's go over the similarities first, so I don't have to get into that later. You can buy all of these audio interfaces for around $100, except for one of them, which is under 60. All of these are two channel interfaces, meaning you have two inputs for external recording. They all have one set of outputs, which will go to your studio speakers. You can use all of these interfaces with a microphone, even a condenser microphone, because they have phantom power. And you can plug in your guitars and external keyboards into them as well. All of these will work with pretty much any DAW on a Mac or a PC. Now note about latency. All of these had similar latency with my MacBook Pro, but they all also feature direct monitoring, which is a great solution for dealing with latency. Direct monitoring allows you to hear the direct input of your external sound along with the music from your DAW so you can sing or play in time with the music. I use my biodynamic headphones to test these interfaces. The model number is DT770, the 250 ohm headphones, which are quieter than your average headphones, but I still highly recommend them. So I will comment about how loud the headphone outputs are on these interfaces. If you wanna buy these headphones, and you should, I'll put a link in the video description. Now, if you don't know how an audio interface fits into your studio, that's okay. Watch my video here where I share all the essential studio gear you need and give you some budget recommendations. All right, let's get this started with the newest audio interface of the seven here. It's the M-Audio Air 192.4. This is the most unique looking audio interface of the bunch and you better like that because this thing has to sit on your desk because of the design. And it's huge compared to the rest. The knobs are huge, but they feel good. It's got a combo microphone and line input and a high Z input for your guitar. I love the meters on this thing. They're really big and easy to read. It's got TRS outputs in the back. The headphone output was a little quiet with my biodynamic headphones. The electric guitar I recorded sounded crisp and clear. And finally, the included software is excellent. You get Ableton Live Lite, Pro Tools First, some Avid effects, and a bunch of instruments and effects from Air. If you're okay with the large size, this is a great all-round interface. Next up is an audio interface with an excellent, unique software package. It's the Native Instruments Complete Audio One. It's got all the features I covered with the M Audio interface. Now it's got a dedicated mic input and a combo line slash instrument input. The VU meters on the top are really great and I really like the placement of the volume knob as well. The convenience of the volume knob is really important, especially if you don't live alone or if you're in an apartment, you'll be reaching for this all the time. So I love when it's easily accessible. The preamps on the native instruments were the warmest of all the interfaces here. I mean, it wasn't overly warm, but a nice warm. The the electric guitar I recorded sounded super crisp and clean. If you like the M Audio layout, this is similar in a smaller package. The included software is native instruments centric, but excellent. You get the Machina software, Monarch synth, a bunch of native instruments effects, and Ableton Live Lite. Now, the only issue I have with this interface is that it's got a plasticky feel to it. The next audio interface is the Tascam US one by two. It's certainly not as popular as the others in this roundup, but listen up. It has some unique features. First, it's iOS compatible, along with being compatible with Macs and PCs. Also, it's got mic and instrument inputs in the front, and then another two line inputs 
in the back. You can't use the front and the back ones at the same time, but it is useful if you've got a guitar, a microphone, and a synth, because you can keep them all hooked up at the same time and with no cable switching. You can just use a switch in the back of the interface to choose the one you want to use. The metal body seems strong and the knobs feel excellent. However, there are a few issues. There is no knob for mixing your direct monitoring signal with your DAW's music, which other interfaces have. It's this knob on the Native Instruments Complete Audio 1. That knob is really useful when you're recording, but Tascam forces you to do it in the software. Also, there are a lot of switches in the back of the interface, which is kind of annoying, so you're constantly reaching back there. The signal meters are kind of sparse. It lights up red if you clip, but no meters like on the M-Audio and the Native Instruments. My electric guitar recording was muffled and low. It just can't compare to the M-Audio and Native Instruments interfaces. Finally, the included software isn't as competitive as some of the others in this roundup. It includes Cubase LE, which is a scaled-down version of the Cubase DAW. By the way, if you've got a little extra cash, I'm going to let you know what you can get if you spend a little more and upgrade to the next level of audio interface. Watch till the end. If you're finding this information useful, hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe. All right, up next, I want to cover the audio interface that surprised me the most. It's the PreSonus AudioBox 96. The reason it surprised me is because it looks and feels dated. But check this out. It has two microphone inputs that combo as an instrument input as well. When I recorded through the mic, it sounded really good. Nice and flat, which is great. This is also the only audio interface in this lineup that has MIDI ins and outs, which is great if you have an old keyboard without a USB connection. The headphone output was a little quiet on my biodynamic headphones. The headphone jack is on the back of the interface, which is not optimal. The included software is excellent. You get the Studio One DAW, and the Studio Magic package, which includes lots of great stuff, like effects from Brainworks and Output, and even Arturia Analog Lab Light. The only things I didn't care for are the clipping light, which is not as nice as the meters on the other interfaces. Now the knobs. These are the worst knobs among all of these, in my opinion. They feel scratchy to the touch. And the knob placement is really odd. You'll see that the first knob in the row actually controls the second input. Why, Presonus, why? But otherwise, it's one of my favorite packages in the Roundup. All right, let's get to the cheapest audio interface in this Roundup. It's the Behringer UMC22. You can currently find this for under 60 bucks, even though it retails for 100. It has a combo mic line input and one instrument input. It's got a signal and clipping indicator like the PreSonus, but not as nice as the meters on the Native Instruments and M-Audio interfaces. The mic recording sounded okay, but just a little closed and tinny to me. Totally fine, but my least favorite. The guitar recording was the quietest at full gain. My electric guitar sounded okay, but nowhere near the M-Audio, Native Instruments, and PreSonus recordings. Also, this audio interface can only record up to 48 kilohertz, which is fine for most, but others may want the option to record higher quality. I mean, a few of the audio interfaces in this roundup go up to 192 kilohertz. The Behringer includes Traction Waveform DAW, which is a really nice DAW, and you get a few free effects and instruments from Behringer. Not my favorite audio interface, but works just fine, and you can't beat the price. Okay, before we get to the last two, I got a little advice. I love doing these budget videos because so many of you are just starting out with music production and I've reviewed the best budget MIDI controller keyboards. Check it out in a video here. All right, no interface comparison would be complete without Focusrite. These are the best selling budget audio interfaces on the market and for good reason. The Scarlet Solo has a mic input and an instrument input in a metal body and a sleek design. Focusrite just recently updated the design of their Scarlet interfaces. Many people love the halo meters, but I do prefer the other type. The preamps sound great, and the new air feature gives you the sound of Focusrite's more expensive interfaces. This company has a great reputation, and the software doesn't disappoint either. You get Ableton Live Lite, Pro Tools First, and the Focusrite Collective, which gives you frequent access to free plugins from different companies. It's really nice, but you may get a few more instrument plugins right off the bat with interfaces like the Native Instruments one. My only issue with the Focusrite interface is the knob placement. 
I tend to hit my fingers against the headphone knob every time I reach for the volume. Otherwise, the Focusrite physical interface is very intuitive, but you'll notice that the Scarlett Solo, like the Tascam and Behringer, does not include a direct monitoring knob. Finally, we have the Steinberg UR12. This audio interface comes from a well-known company that makes the super popular Cubase DAW software. And you get Cubase AI with this interface. It's got a mic input and an instrument input and all the basic features of the other interfaces here. Now, I don't care for the single light clipping indicator, which is similar to the Tascam and PreSonus and Behringer ones. It's missing the direct monitoring knob as well. And the phantom power switch is on the back. I was hoping they would include more software too, from a variety of companies maybe. But hey, Cubase is a pretty complete deal itself. Here are some final thoughts on my favorites. The M Audio looks modern, great knob layout, but it's pretty big for just a basic audio interface. The Native Instruments interface is super small if that's what you need, and I love the layout and software included. The PreSonus really surprised me and is the best value for what you get, MIDI included and great software, but it feels very dated, and I would put my money on PreSonus updating this sometime soon. Finally, I've been a Focusrite interface user for years. I can attest to its durability and longevity. If you can deal with the lack of that direct monitoring knob, I would stand behind the Scarlet Solo. So what do you get when you pay around $30 more to upgrade to the next level of audio interfaces? Well, in most cases, you just get more inputs and outputs. More inputs are helpful if you record multiple instruments at a time or if you have a band. I also find them useful if, like me, you've got a bunch of hardware synths and you don't want to keep unplugging and plugging back in your different devices. More outputs is useful if you have multiple studio speakers or if you want to route the audio to other external equipment. Maybe it'll be right for you when you decide to upgrade your studio. I hope you found this information useful. You'll find links to purchase any one of these audio interfaces in the video description below. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Here are some vocals and guitars. I recorded my vocals using a Slate ML1 condenser microphone. I recorded the guitar using a Fender Stratocaster electric guitar plugged straight into the interfaces. This is me testing out the M Audio 192.4. This is me testing out the Native Instruments Complete Audio 1. This is me testing out the Tascam US 1x2. This is me testing out the PreSonus AudioBox USB 96. This is me testing out the Behringer UMC 22. This is me testing out the Focusrite Scarlett Solo. This is me testing out the Steinberg UR12. Keep making the music you love, and hey, check out one of these videos next.